Welcome everyone, today we delve into a pressing issue, the worsening state of mental health. It's a crisis that's been escalating, touching the lives of millions of Americans annually. This isn't a localized issue though, globally we're seeing a significant uptick in the rates of anxiety and depression. These mental health conditions are not just numbers on a page, they represent real people grappling with real challenges every day. But here's the worrying part, despite mental health services being within reach, over half of those wrestling with these conditions are not receiving the treatment they need. This is not due to a lack of will or desire to get better, it's a complex issue with many contributing factors, and it's this complexity that we need to unravel and understand. So what's causing this mental health crisis to worsen? We've got four key reasons to explore, but before we go any further, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. First up, we're looking at the role social media plays in our mental health. In today's digital world, social media has become an integral part of our daily routines. While it has its perks, like connecting us with people from all around the globe, it also has its downsides, notably its impact on our mental health. This is especially true for younger individuals who are more likely to be heavy users of these platforms. Several scientific studies have shed light on the correlation between social media use and mental health issues. One such study found that high levels of social media engagement were linked to increased feelings of social isolation. This seems paradoxical, right? We're more connected than ever before, and yet we're also feeling more alone. Another study found that excessive social media use can lead to symptoms of anxiety and depression. It's easy to get caught up in the cycle of comparing our lives to the polished, filtered versions we see online. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy and lower self-esteem, which are common triggers for anxiety and depression. Moreover, the instant gratification that social media provides can be addictive. With every like, share, or comment, our brains release a burst of dopamine, a feel-good chemical. This can create a feedback loop where we're constantly seeking more engagement, which can lead to addictive behaviors and, in turn, increased stress and anxiety. It's also important to consider the impact of cyberbullying, a phenomenon that's been on the rise with the advent of social media. Victims of online harassment are more likely to experience depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts. The anonymity that the internet provides can embolden bullies, making this a serious concern for the mental well-being of social media users. In a nutshell, while social media can serve as a platform for connection and expression, it can also expose users to unrealistic comparisons, cyberbullying, and addictive behaviors, all of which can negatively impact mental health. That's not to say we should abandon social media altogether. Instead, it's about finding a healthy balance and being mindful of how we use these platforms. Limiting our screen time, setting boundaries, and focusing on real-life interactions can go a long way in mitigating these effects. Clearly, our online lives are having a profound impact on our mental well-being, but that's not the only factor at play. Next, we turn our attention to the impact of isolation. Imagine being cut off from the world with no social interactions, no hugs, no friendly chit-chat. It sounds like a scene from a dystopian novel, doesn't it? But for many, this was a harsh reality during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it has left lasting scars on our collective mental health. Isolation, whether self-imposed or enforced, is a major contributor to the worsening mental health crisis we're dealing with today. The human species is fundamentally social. We thrive on connections, interactions, and shared experiences. But when we're isolated, it's like cutting off a lifeline. It's no wonder that isolation can lead to a host of mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. During the pandemic, as quarantine measures were put in place worldwide, we saw a sharp rise in mental health concerns. Now you might be wondering, how big of a problem can this really be? Well, let's delve into the numbers. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that the prevalence of depression symptoms was three times higher during the COVID-19 pandemic than before. Moreover, a survey conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention revealed that 40% of adults in the United States reported struggling with mental health issues or substance abuse due to pandemic-related stress. These figures are alarming to say the least but they underscore the severity of the situation. It's not just the pandemic-induced isolation that's problematic. Even before COVID-19, loneliness was a significant issue. A Cigna study found that nearly half of Americans reported feeling alone, left out, or isolated. And these feelings of loneliness can have devastating effects on mental health, with research linking them to increased risk of depression, anxiety, and even suicide. 
So, what's the solution? How can we combat this isolation and its detrimental effects on our mental health? It starts with acknowledging the problem and then seeking help. There are numerous resources available such as online therapy services and community clinics. However, it's also crucial to remember that self-care and maintaining connections, even digital ones, can go a long way in mitigating the effects of isolation. So, reach out to a friend, join an online group with shared interests, or simply take a walk in the park. These small steps can make a big difference in your mental health. The pandemic has shown us just how detrimental isolation can be to our mental health. But there are still more factors to consider. Our third factor, your family tree. As we delve into the role of family history and genetics, we uncover a significant aspect of mental health. It's a fact that our genetic makeup, our DNA, the very blueprint of who we are, can play a significant role in our mental health. Research has provided us with compelling evidence that mental health conditions can run in families. This isn't to say that if a family member has a mental health condition, you're guaranteed to have one too, but it does mean that you might be more predisposed or vulnerable to developing one. Now let's think about this in terms of genetics. Your genes are like a set of instructions that tell your body how to grow, develop, and function. They're passed down from your parents and they influence everything from your hair color to your risk of certain diseases. When it comes to mental health, certain genes or combinations of genes can make individuals more susceptible to conditions like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. In fact, studies have shown that having a first-degree relative with a serious mental illness increases your risk of developing that illness. For instance, if your parent or sibling has schizophrenia, your chances of developing the condition are approximately 10 times higher than someone without this family history. But remember, having these genes doesn't mean you will definitely develop a mental health condition. It's more accurate to think of it as being at a higher risk. It's a complex interplay between your genes and your environment that ultimately influences your mental health. For example, stressful life events or trauma can trigger the onset of mental health problems in someone with a genetic predisposition. Understanding the role of family history and genetics in mental health can help us take proactive steps. It's essential to acknowledge this connection and seek early intervention if necessary. After all, knowledge is power. It enables us to take action, seek help, and put preventive measures in place. Despite the weight that our genetic makeup holds, it's important to remember that it doesn't write our destiny. With the right support, treatment, and coping strategies, individuals with a family history of mental health conditions can lead fulfilling, healthy lives. As we can see, our genes can have a significant impact on our mental health. But there's one more factor we need to discuss. Finally, we must consider the role of healthcare accessibility in this crisis. One of the most significant barriers to managing mental health is, unfortunately, the simple lack of access to mental health services. It's a hurdle that many face, particularly in rural areas where mental health professionals are scarce. Picture a community where the nearest psychiatrist or psychologist is a hundred miles away. A place where there are no community clinics, no online therapy services. This is the reality for many people living in rural parts of our country. And it's a reality that contributes significantly to the worsening mental health crisis. Now, consider this. Research indicates that over half of those with mental health conditions do not receive treatment. That's more than half of the millions of people affected by conditions like anxiety and depression left to manage their symptoms without professional help. The impact of this lack of access cannot be overstated. It's like having a broken leg and no orthopedist to set it. Without access to appropriate care, mental health conditions can worsen, often leading to significant distress and further complications. Studies have shown a clear correlation between lack of access to mental health services and worsening mental health conditions. For instance, a study published in the Journal of Rural Health found that rural residents have higher rates of chronic depression and severe psychological distress. Moreover, cultural competence in mental health care is also a major issue. There's a need for providers who not only understand the medical aspects of mental health but also the cultural nuances that can affect treatment and recovery. It's worth noting that there are resources available to help address this issue. Organizations like the SAMHSA National Helpline and Mental Health. America worked tirelessly to assist those in need of mental health services. They offer help in finding appropriate care and can be invaluable resources for those struggling to navigate the complicated landscape of mental health care. However, it's clear that more needs to be done. 
the lack of mental health services is a significant factor in the escalating mental health crisis. It's a problem that requires not just awareness, but action. We need more mental health professionals, particularly in underserved areas, and we need to ensure that those who need help can get it, regardless of where they live. In many areas, simply getting to a mental health professional is a challenge in itself, a factor that undoubtedly contributes to the worsening mental health crisis. As we've seen, there are multiple factors contributing to the worsening state of mental health. But, let's not forget, there's always a silver lining. The first step in addressing these challenges is seeking help. It's a step that requires courage and strength, but it's an essential one. Healthcare providers are a great starting point. They can guide you towards the right path to wellness, whether that's through medication, therapy, or a combination of both. They have the knowledge and resources to help you navigate this journey. But remember, you're the one in charge. You're the one who decides what feels right for your mental health. In our digital age, online therapy services have become increasingly popular. They offer convenience, accessibility, and anonymity. You can access these services from the comfort of your home, at a time that suits you. This can be particularly beneficial for those living in rural areas where mental health services may be scarce. Community clinics are also valuable resources. They often provide affordable mental health services and are known for their inclusivity and cultural competence. No matter who you are, where you come from or what you're going through, you're accepted and welcomed. But let's not underestimate the power of self-care practices. Whether it's a walk in the park, journaling or practicing mindfulness, these activities can have a profound impact on our mental well-being. They offer us a moment of respite, a moment to reconnect with ourselves. And finally, don't hesitate to lean on your trusted circle. Friends, family or mentors can provide emotional support, a listening ear or simply a shoulder to lean on. They remind us that we're not alone, that it's okay to not be okay. Remember, help is available and it's crucial to reach out if you're struggling. If you found this video useful, please leave a comment below and share your thoughts. Let's keep this important conversation going. And before you go, thank you so much for watching our video and please make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you want to try our 90-day dopamine detox challenge, watch the video on your screen next.